All right, now to save time and typing, what I did is I put some of this code onto um, an untitled document so I can copy and paste it from it. So what I'm gonna do is show you this. So this if statement always stays true, right? If it's gonna be greater than seven, I wanna trigger the animation. Else, it does something else. So what I need to do is figure out how to or how to trigger my other animation. So this is gonna be fire mid, and fire down is based upon distance. So if it's based upon distance, it's based upon ray casting. And I brought this shield variable in, okay? So that means what I now need to do is this. Okay, let's copy. And if you notice, this looks a lot like the code back in simple raycast, but with an added thing. Now that I brought shield in to this script, I can now script it shield period. Okay, so it's gonna look at that shield and it's gonna start using the ray casting from that because that's the ray casting that's causing damage. So I want them to be the same. Am I ever gonna use right? Probably not, but I'm gonna put it in here. And I think once I get the lerping going, I won't have to worry about right. Okay, so there we go. Save that out. Now, since I brought this in, my second animation is going to look a lot like this. If the physics ray cast is in the transform position, and if I look at transform position for a second and say, well, what transform position? I should say shield period transform position, okay? And I left out area here. I wanted the area to become uh, an integer that I control within script. So I can change that. Nobody else can change it unless they go into the scripting. So 30 is going to be the distance that the transformation takes place. And then he's going to play a different animation. Fire down and the blaster equals true. Technically, I probably don't even have to put that in there, but I'll put it in there just for the random sake of random. Okay, so there we go. He shoots. He shoots down. So now I have to kind of decide at what distance does he shoot down. And see that ray cast, that one is pretty big. So that shield right there, the center tangent on that shield is what's causing this magic to happen. So if your player character right here is a little taller, that's why I have to keep jumping in order for the animation to trigger. So if you don't want that to happen, you know, you could have two shields or something like that, or a shield here at player level that's doing all the ray casting. Or you can just kind of lower the shield by taking and shrinking it up a little bit. And putting the object there. Okay. Now it's at player level a little bit more. And I can put soldier back on shield. So it all depends where you want that collide to happen. So let's see if that works a little bit better. Yep, see how it, it, it's starting to trigger a little bit better. And now it's starting to trigger that one a little bit better too. I would say 30 is a little bit too far away because as soon as I get close, the animation isn't triggering all the time. So I would say 20 maybe. Now, 
it feels like I'm pushing him around a lot. So that's probably where you would put the chase script on there and get him chasing you a little bit more where he's coming up to you, moving ever so ominous towards you. So the chase script could go on the Master Shield. Or if he scripted it a little bit different now, you know, you could probably put that right on the animation script itself. And you can get out the idea of enemy and player because you've, you've now seen how to drag into the mix of those transform nodes. Instead of these, where I keep clicking and dragging um, a player, Let's see, I got a player and I got an enemy, I can start using those outside variables that I'm, I'm pulling in a lot more and get rid of the idea that this has to take place every time because it gets very tedious setting up the the engine. I could imagine if you you had lots of these enemies, you wouldn't want every enemy to have this. I guess you could make them prefabs and this already happens, but just think about think about stupid stuff like that because that stupid stuff really helps out later on as you're developing uh the aesthetics of the engine. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So he's moving towards me. He's firing. When he gets too close, he's going to start blasting me this way. Very cool. And he's still lurking a little bit. So we're going to have to work on a little bit more on him as far as now what happens when I jump over him. And we'll look at other things. All right. So on to the next video.